Hello everybody, my name is Connor Vagel Bagel Vagel, and as you can tell, this is a little bit of a different broadcast. Uh, but I'm joined today by Tim, uh, Plenty Waves, uh, Shramic, and uh, I think we're ready to go. We're good. I think we're good to go, so we should be going. So yeah, alright, cool. Sorry about that everybody. We're uh, So like I was saying, this is a little bit of a different broadcast. Uh, so. Due to the ongoing event in the eSports arena right now, um, the uh, Smash for Support event, uh, this obviously is not a live Twitch broadcast. Um, this is going to be pre-recorded. Uh, you're going to be seeing this first on YouTube here in just a little bit. So hopefully we'll be uh, getting this to you. Uh, it should be Saturday, or sorry, Sunday by the time you're watching this, but it is Saturday right now uh, as we are recording this. So we should be ready. And uh, then we go with that. All right. As we are finally into draft, there you go. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, here we go with the first draft of the uh, contest here. And immediately, Azir gets banned away, as has been uh, very standard with NIU on the blue side here. Shall I turn in my badge and rifle as well? Yeah, to be honest, I, I was kind of surprised to see that every game, considering the fact that I, I'm not 100% sure that anybody on NIU is uh, is super heavy into the Rumble. Um, so, kind of always, must must be something that I'm unaware of, uh, so we'll have to see how that one goes. But, uh, Caitlyn and Rye is going to be the bands that come through here, and now the Zack from NIU. Uh, definitely playing towards comfort here, if you're on the side of the Huskies. I absolutely agree, and that Sejuani kind of does a little bit of both of that. Uh, you've got the meta with the Sejuani pick, but also something that we've seen Xana can play and have a lot of comfort on. Uh, Vi going to be picked up here for the side of Toledo, so definitely a couple of beefy, uh, beefy junglers, although you do see that there's a little bit more of the bruiserness coming through from Toledo. And Bard going to be picked up, something that I know you noticed was played quite a bit by Toledo. Um, it's an interesting pick, especially in competitive play, considering most of the time you're going to see the Bard go for the Chimes and kind of sack lane. Um, so this could give NIU the chance to have that first, you know, massive lead in the bot lane so far this season. Absolutely, and NIU are going to pick up their own bot lane here. They're going to go with the Jin and the Lux. Uh, you have to imagine that's going to be a Lux support. I, you know, you don't see it super often in the mid lane anymore. Um, but Jin going to be very poke heavy, as is the Lux, and Sivir also going to play into that style here on the side of Toledo. So, very similar drafts so far. Um, Sivir does have the Ricochet uh, to be able to. Uh, the ricochet blade to be able to clear out those waves super quickly, um, which may help if Bard's going to be roaming quite a bit. But overall, a very interesting uh, style here. Uh, Twist of Fate going to be taken off the board, so Toledo also believes that this Lux is going to go towards the support position. Um, and NIU now going to take off the Varus, which is interesting. Maybe a flex, you know, Sivir mid or a Varus uh, mid. Uh, flex possible here from Toledo, so uh, they decide that they don't want to even risk it, uh, and they'll go ahead and uh, change it up and ban that away. I promise. Yeah, definitely an interesting choice to uh, to look at the solo lanes as potentially um, the ones that need to be kind of uh, 
pulled down a little bit here and uh, left to be kind of counter matchups. Toledo going to leave mid lane for their counter here with Jax being picked. NIU does have Got You Sucker in here on this matchup, meaning that uh, this is the Alawi pick into that one. So we've seen a couple of different counters to this Jax, uh, depending on who's playing. Uh, when we see IXI shot, we tend to see that that's um, something along the lines of a set or a Cassante, uh, but we'll see the Alawi here for Gotcha Sucker. And Ari going to be picked up for a buff, uh, sorry, for B Chillin. And uh, that's something that we've definitely seen him put a bit of priority on over the last couple of weeks. Uh, strong pick, uh, especially with some of those uh, some of those changes that it's had over the last couple of weeks. And Swain now going to be the final pick. Uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I think the other thing that uh, that is of note here with that mid lane matchup, um, Ari is going to be a champ that looks to be very weave in and out of, uh, of fights. So she wants to uh, jump in, jump out, uh, dive back and forth. But the one thing about Ari's abilities is they're all pretty much, the, the damaging abilities are all pretty much telegraphed in a straight line. And Swain tends to be able to take advantage of that just a little bit with his uh, E and being able to uh, grab the Nether Grasp onto you. So I, I wonder if that might be part of what they were looking at with that pick. But I also agree. I'm not sure that it was the it's what I would uh, would have gone with for the late game. Um, so I think NIU definitely has a good scaling composition here. Uh, and I think you're absolutely right a little bit with one of the things that you also uh, brought up, which is that uh, NIU's disengage for some of these fights when Swain wants to go in is going to be pretty monumental. You've got the uh, Glacial Prison from Sejuani. You've got uh, Lux has all sorts of disengage potential. Jin can just snipe at you and stun you and then walk away. So lots of different opportunities to potentially uh, deter the Swain from being able to continue to proc his ultimate. While we have a minute... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, while we have a minute, I do want to say, uh, you know, thank you to everybody who uh, who had participated yesterday, uh, by the time you're watching this yesterday, but right now it's happening, um, in the uh, in Smash for Support, uh, your generous contributions uh, to help out the Trevor Project have been very, uh, very well received, and it's been uh, something that we're really proud to have been a part of. Um, other things going on. Uh, do mark your calendars for this one. I mentioned it just a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago during the broadcast, but we have confirmation that NIU Esports will be participating. So mark your calendars for Wednesday, uh, March 22nd, and uh, and Thursday, March 23rd, because that's going to be Huskies United. So we're going to be uh, raising some funds here to benefit the NIU Esports Scholarship Fund. Um It'll be a great uh, 1895 minutes of giving, um, so 1895 minutes straight of, uh, of fundraising across the university. So it is something that you guys won't want to miss, especially because we'll have some awesome things going on on the channel for you guys. So on Twitch, uh, you guys will be able to take. We'll have a, a League of Legends match on Wednesday, complete with a pregame show. Uh, we have a planned pregame show as well as some. Uh, Potentially some content after the game as well. And then Thursday we're going to do uh, not necessarily the same as our previous streamathons, so it won't be that 12-hour long streamathon, but we'll be looking to do something maybe five or six hours long with some cool content for you too there. So be sure to check it out, and uh, any and all support is uh, greatly appreciated during that time. All right, we're going to... I know it went black screen for you there, but we're going to go ahead and uh, jump into the game here. And so, 
Tim, what else are you looking for as we load in here? Absolutely. Now, one other thing that I do want to note is this is potentially the first time that NIU has had an advantage in the uh, in the ranks across the board. Not that that's you know the most important thing here, but it is something to uh, to keep in note that most of uh, we see across the board it is going to be golds for the side of Toledo, uh, and then Astro Welcome Smash in the in the Ridge. bot lane role is going to be a diamond. Um, whereas it's a couple of uh, diamonds on an IU and then uh, golds for the rest, so they do have a slight advantage here. So on paper, this is uh, this is a nice matchup for NIU. We've talked about how they've been improving week upon week, and uh, they're on paper this could be the one where they break through and get that first victory. Now looking at oh, go ahead. Minions has spawned. Absolutely. Now, looking at it here, uh, it is going to be very standard starts across the board. We see the um, Conquer for the Alawi. We see Lethal Tempo for the Jax. Uh, we see on the Sejuani, it's going to be Aftershock and then Conquer for the Vi and the Swain. Electrocute for Ari here with uh, Ignites on both mid laners as well as we've got mirrored summoner spells across the board actually. Um, but looking back at the runes, uh, Fleet Footwork for extra loaded on this Jin, uh, Lethal Tempo for this uh, Sivir, and that was a really nice trade actually by Beach Ellen, um, on towards this, uh, this Swain. But right, right back. Lethal Tempo, or sorry, Fleet Footwork, sorry, for. Uh, for the bard and Lux with summon Airy. All right, that's enough. Uh, that's enough going through that, missing the action. But uh, early on, we do see a little bit of a poke towards Buff Pillsbury boy. Mid lane's been trading, and uh, it is going to be a full clear on the bot side for Sejuani here versus the full clear on the top side for the buy. Yeah, absolutely, and now we are going to see Jax go in on this Alawi, but it is just a trade as that could be, oh, the Tentacle Smash doesn't land, which forces the Flash. Now this is going to be a uh, Flash back by Jax. He's going to continue to pull it out, but it does look like, oh no, he's not going to be able to get out of that one, and it is going to be the uh, turret shots going to take him down. Now Vi looks to be going towards this bot lane. We'll have to see if NIU is able to escape this one, as there's going to be the nice stun on towards the, uh, on towards the Sivir. Flashes out of the Vi dash forward, and now NIU has a chance to be able to turn this one around. That's going to be a couple of shots forward. The Lux Binding doesn't land, but Astro Math will, or Astro Smash will be falling now. That's going to be the kill going on to Extra Loaded. That's two now down in the bot lane, and NIU with a 3-1 to one kill lead and a nice 1,000 gold lead here at about three and a half minutes. Absolutely. I mean, they're definitely playing with some early game aggression. 
Um, that was a really nice way to bait in the charm here from Ari and then the uh, the trade back here. But now we do see again some aggression in the top lane as the Tentacle Smash hasn't quite landed on towards Base Police and he's gonna actually grab the second kill on towards Gachi Sucker. And so if there's one saving grace for Toledo, it's that you've got Jax up two to one here in the early game kills, but both top laners already have their sheen. Uh, it does look like teleports was, were used by both cleaners to get back here, so uh, that won't be available for Alawi, so she may lose about one wave, I would imagine. It's a cannon one, so it's important, but we'll have to see how quickly uh, we see how quickly Gotcha Sucker is able to get back in there. Is he able to grab this cannon? Uh, we'll have to see as it looks like he does grab the cannon, so that's actually really important here to keep him in this one and really doesn't fall super behind off of that uh, that early aggression. Looks like a potential second gank towards mid lane. Flashes forward and charm lands, and that's actually nothing that Femboy Thighs can do to get out of this one. He's got a, he already had to use the flash there, so not really much he can do to get out. Absolutely. Now, one thing I do want to note is while NIU does have that uh, that Rift Scuttler in the bot lane, uh, or the bot side of the map, now it does expire. Uh, the vision definitely is on the side of Toledo, and that is something that I'd, I'd like to see NIU work on a little bit, is these early drakes. They have had uh, lesser cryo on it. Now this is going to be a gang towards the bot lane, but the charm does land buff Pillsbury Boy, able to take a nice chunk of damage here. Flash forward from the Ari, or sorry, from the Ari, from the Vi, but it's not going to be a whole lot here. As Sejuani now is baiting in, this is the ultimate on towards base police, and there is nothing that he can do. Gotcha Sucker is going to grab that one. So NIU just having the nice communication and moving around the map and making these map plays. Now that's even the stun going through on towards Astro Smash and taken very low. Jin does not have the four shot in range, so we'll have to back away from that one. But now Vi is going to be here. The That's going to be the exhaust going on towards Extra Loaded, but the fourth shot is going to land. And now that's the split focus coming through from Toledo. It, are they going to be able to grab anything? This, that's going to be a double kill on towards Extra Loaded. And now he is just baiting them around here. If he's able to get the stun onto Vi, I don't think he will. So Vi will just be able to get out of that one. But it is a double kill on towards the side of NIU's bot laner, and now we're seeing Femboy Thighs once again going in on this Ari and uh, taking a nice trade, but Ari gonna go right ahead and just trade it right back. Absolutely, and uh, that does look like, yep, uh, that was a nice job by Tempered Fate, being able to grab the, uh, able to grab that uh, scuttle crab, take it away. Now, Tempered Fate is actually uh, the name of Bard's ultimate, meaning that this guy is a Bard main, and uh, base police is going to be able to grab the kill, and that's unfortunately just what Jax does when he's ahead in this lane, is he just kind of runs down to Lowie. But yeah. Uh, interesting to see this uh, this bard main kind of do his work, but this is what we were talking about, where the bot lane for Toledo kind of has to play. Um, Sivir has to be kind of careful, even when she pushes in the lane, because for the most part, bard is going to be out roaming, grabbing his chimes, all that sort of deal.
Yeah, absolutely. And now the wave is low, and that's going to be enough that there is going to be the curtain call. Oh, shot two misses, shot three misses, shot four misses, unfortunately. Oh, buff Pillsbury boy actually falls to the turret in that one. It will be a double kill over towards Jin, but not perfectly executed if you're NIU. You really wanted to trade aggro there, but the shots missing from extra load means that it did not trade aggro back over towards Jin. Uh, it doesn't matter in the end. You do lose buff Pillsbury boy, unfortunately, uh, and he gets that shut down over towards Tempered Fate. But overall, a really nice play from NIU, and the lead does continue to balloon. Now they do get that Chemtech Drake, so we'll see the uh, the Mountain Drake as the second one here in just about five minutes. Yeah, he's going to go towards the top side. He'll just clear out this uh, control ward. The stun from Tempered Fate was there, so it doesn't mean that he won't be able to grab these kills. Uh, the, the recalls will come in in time. So the roam will be for naught, and it will just be uh, NIU grabbing some more... Uh, trying to grab these, these waves that are crashing in the mid and the top side. Yeah, I think really their only option is to use that boomerang blade um, and continuously, uh, continuously just throw that in. Now that's going to be the ultimate. Nicely done, layering the charm into the glacial prison. The tempered fate is going to be there, but not really going to do a whole lot considering that the Ari didn't get caught in it. So now that'll be Ari going back in on this one. Charm is not going to land, but this is going to be the ult coming in from Jin. It's going to be the ult's layered, actually. Buff Pillsbury Boy using that one, too. And it's going to be now another kill over towards NIU. Xanakin's in a tough spot. He is under turret here, but that's going to be the exhaust as well coming through. And Jin is going to grab a second kill in that fight. 6-0-2 is extra loaded on this uh, Jin, meaning that he now has the Gale Force finish and uh, he is in an amazing spot. You just love to see it at, if you're the ADC here. Uh, Extra Loaded really gets to play with his food from this point onward. Looking at the gold, he's got, yeah, 6,000 gold uh, in in inventory at some point, or across the board, uh, including 1,500 in the inventory almost. And so that's about a 2,000 gold lead just on the gin right now, 1,800 or so. So always, uh, always awesome to see that um, as you go. Uh, looking at it, Mythic items going to be finished here from the Sejuani, uh, as well as Ari just grabbing hers, and Gale Force, as we mentioned, had been finished on the Jin. Um, on the side of Toledo, you just have the one, you have the Divine Sunderer up top on the Jax. Yeah, I mean, speaking of Jax, uh, Jax dying there up in the top lane as uh, he tried the dive, and uh, that was an amazing bait from Gotcha Sucker, uh, looking at the damage that... Uh, oh, that's actually going to be by failing the dive over the wall, although all the ultimates have missed. Now blocking the... Oh, no. Oh, no. NIU. Doing... And that, this is... This is unfortunate if you're Toledo, uh, in terms of NIU doing some, not mean things, but just like they're so far ahead at this point that 
it, it's tough to play this game as Toledo. So, going back to that top lane, um, Alawi just turning things around with and, and forcing Jax to fight her under turret, and he did not have the damage to be able to do just that. As NIU threatens another dive, this is going to have to be the ultimate proc from the Sivir. It will just be the wave being cleared here in front of it. So, extra loaded. Going to take actually a couple turret shots, which was not ideal, but. Uh, then you saw the pick right above the dragon pit, right where uh, they're standing now. And then again, Vi getting caught in NIU's jungle after all of that was said and done. Uh, looking for the additional pick, and now Ultimate does come through with the Vault Breaker. Flash comes through buff the Ghost Story Boy. It's going to be a chase down for Gambit. There will be the kill going on towards Femboy Thighs, but NIU going to turn this around and now it's going to fight back. That's going to be one shot in the landing of the curtain call, two shots, three shots, four shots actually blocked by Tempered Fate. Double kill on towards Fen by Thighs, but X Reloaded is going to actually trade this one back. That kill is going to go over towards Xanakin. That's a triple kill on towards Xanakin and a quadra kill on towards Xanakin. Now, uh, where's the teleport when you need it? Because that would have been fun to teleport up top, grab that pentacle, but not available, so it will just be the quadra, and NIU will grab themselves their second Drake of the game. And at this point, I'm not sure that I see a way back for Toledo in this game, even if. If it's 15 minutes, this is already a uh, 7,000 in favor of the Huskies. Yeah, absolutely. And Buff Pillsbury Boy wins the uh, the Vision War there. Uh, both teams looking to try to uh, going to try to trade out. And now this is actually going to be this is the stun under turret, and it's not going to be enough. So that's going to be a couple of turret shots. Tempered Fate does land on towards uh, Buff Pillsbury Boy, so he will fall. But traded up in the top lane. That was the kill going over towards the Ari, just roaming up really nicely and able to grab that on towards base police. So, like you were saying, uh, Jax is kind of the one that you need to get ahead here if you're going to come back in your Toledo. But unfortunately for them, there's not... I, I mean, now NIU is focusing down this Jax at every point in the game. It's going to take a major misplay or, you know, a couple of these... Uh, a couple of bush camps like this. Uh, for the side of Toledo to be able to grab anything. Now that's going to be ultimate coming through from Thigh. The teleport is coming through, but is NIU going to be able to get here in time? They're going to be able to at least get to this fight. Will they turn things around? There's going to be a lot of damage. Tempered Fate is taken low and actually slain. Now Beachillin's going to follow through. There's going to be the damage. The charm doesn't land, but Beachillin now is going to be able to grab that one. The reset comes through on the ultimate. Now Astro, uh, Astro Smash is there. There's going to be no ultimate available, and that's going to be a lot of damage. Don't kill on towards the Ari, and uh, Femboy Thighs flashes over the charm, but not really going to be able to do a whole lot, as that's going to be the triple kill going on towards the Ari. And now Gotchu Sucker finds base police in a bad position here, and uh, the slow is going to come through with the soul. Nope, it does not get finished off, actually. So it will just be NIU setting up for, well, not even the Drake, because the Drake doesn't come up for another uh, two and a half minutes. So, I think they just kind of reset and potentially look for the Rift Herald here, or they just push their uh, push the lanes, uh, is kind of what it looks like they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. The other thing too with the Sarah is uh, you do notice that she's going for the uh, the crit build too, which could change up 
you know, where her power scaling is, that's going to be a little bit of a later spike, but it is going to be a heavier spike than it would be on the Nidalee um, build. So, uh, definitely going to be something that we have to pay attention to. If Toledo has a way back in this game, it would really be through that Sivir now. Um, with the uh, change up build, I would say the Sivir probably has gotten to be uh, on the Jax level of if you let her get fed, she will, you know, carry just as hard as Jax would. But, uh, yeah, and are you going to have to try to try to keep this now? And the turrets are falling, so uh, Jax is able to grab the tier one here in the bot lane. And IU just looks to try to roam the, uh, towards that jungle and potentially grab the pick, but not a whole lot they can do. Now, Teleport does come through, and IU does have vision of that, so it will be just the disengage from them. And now, actually, this is going to be Toledo jumping too far forward. Xanakin grabs yet another kill, 7-0-11. And uh, it does look like the curtain call was a nicely avoided by Toledo. But Ari going to be diving forward here, baiting him in. And there's going to be another kill going on towards Extra Loaded. And Astro Smash is in a bad spot here. Beach Hill is going to be unstoppable here. Fenboy Thighs also going to drop. Zanakin going to be grabbing that one too. And now it's all down to the Bard. And uh, that is going to be the charm. The kill's going to go over towards Beach Hill. And 10, 2, and 8. And that is a clean ace for the side of the Huskies. 31 to 10, 21 minutes in, they're going to be threatening the base here of Toledo. Yeah, and I mean, looking at it, this is going to be NIU just roaming back, grabbing the Drake being, you know, nice and safe here. They didn't grab the inhibitors at this point, but they grabbed the two turrets, the bot lane and the mid lane inhibitor turrets. So, really not much that uh, Toledo can do to hold those at this point. They have to just go ahead and, uh, and try to hold it off here, but... You know, I think it's going to take a Miracle Baron Steel. Actually, I, I'll correct myself. It's going to take multiple Baron Steels for the side of Toledo to be able to hold the, all of these inhibitors and, you know, grab back this gold lead. Uh, if there's one thing that works in their favor, it's, as they always say, that gold the gold lead means less and less the further you get into the game. And so... At this point, a 12,000 gold lead is pretty insurmountable, but if they're able to, you know, stem the bleeding and keep NIU from growing this any further, then maybe you see them having, you know, more something back here. As Beach Hill actually could be caught, this is going to be a couple of different stuns, and the flash comes through from Jax, but it is going to be now the flash from Beach Hill, and NIU's here to save their mid laner, and that'll be turned around. Xanakin's going to grab Tempered Fate, and this is now going to be the charm on towards the by she will fall, or sorry towards the jack he will fall gambit's gonna be in the back line not gonna be able to grab anything zanakin uh will grab one as well as x reloaded will grab a second femboy thighs gonna be stunned up here ultimate not gonna matter double kill on towards the uh on towards the gin but it doesn't matter in the end because that was a 4v5 and uh got you sucker is just split pushing on towards the bot lane gonna take out the inhibitor turret number one or sorry, the inhibitor on the bot lane. Now the mid, everybody else will get this mid lane inhibitor. So that'll be two waves of super minions going through. Uh, they won't get the double supers, but it won't matter because it's Tempered Fate versus the world. And it will be one turret falling. Now the Tempered Fate will be used by Tempered Fate. And that'll be two Nexus turrets falling, although this could be turned around. Lots of damage coming through buff kills for a able to grab a kill here now. It's going to be the second one on towards got you sucker on to this jacks in a 3v5 last call to hold of your base and niu just gonna go ahead and end this one 38 to 10 with a 14 or 16,000 gold lead my apologies and they will grab their first game win of the season and look to get their first match win here in just a couple of minutes all right
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was just a that was a you know nice game from start to finish for NIU. Uh, so you know they, if they can replicate that, then they'll find themselves in the win column for the first time this season. So definitely uh, a strong one. NIU going to move to the red side this time. Uh, and we're going to see Toledo take the blue side this time. It does look like um, same rosters altogether for both teams. Yeah, I think it has to be. Uh, I think it has to be the, um, the gin. The, I mean, honestly, there's. I don't know that you can ban everybody. That was that was the problem for NIU in that game. To be let, let's, see. but let's see where they go with it. Uh, as we are into champ select, but yeah, I think Ari and Jin definitely gonna be All at the top right, of their priority. I'm but going. Rumble kept off the board. I mean, I I must not I must not be aware. Is is Rumble this like? S plus 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 tier champion because I see it banned all the time and it, I don't know that it's that strong. Like, I I don't know. Um, but Shall I turn in my badge and write same bans as, well? as last game so far. So, Tim, do you do you think they're thinking that it was just execution and they could go for the salty run back here? Is that the idea I here? I, no, there's the Sichuani. They they say that was the facilitator and they're gonna ban that away. Okay, so I stand corrected. Yeah, that's um, they they hovered it last game. I don't know that I like it as a pick, uh, but you know, gives them that tankiness and more of the AP engage style of of support or of jungler like NIU was going for here. So I guess NIU will have to go with something different. It's gonna be the Nami. Are we gonna see the Lucian Nami? They left it up. They're gonna go with Maokai. So is it Nami Zeri? It, you know, depends on where the side of Toledo wants to go with this. Uh, you'd have to imagine that NIU picks up the Lucian if it's available here on pick number three. Uh, but, you know, assuming that uh, that Toledo sees exactly what they're going for here and picks that Lucian, it, it could simply be that NIU is trying to bait the Lucian out here from Astro Smash. So I, I'm truly uh, interested to see where this draft goes from here because this is a bit of mind games at this point. Leaving that Lucian available, um, what do you pair with that Navi? Yeah, you have to imagine that you're not going to see a vein with the Nami, even if this miss. Well, there it is. Okay, well, I've been debated. It's um, this is interesting. Uh, we'll have to see exactly where they want to go with it, as that is definitely something a little different from the from the different ADCs that actually yeah. has played. I do wonder if this is maybe you know a vein in a lane. You know, a, a solo lane vein. You you don't anticipate that that could be the case, but you know what? The more I think about it, I do like this vein pick. It's going to be difficult for uh, Toledo to deal with, even with this black shield. Um, you've got the triple. Uh, you know, you got the three passive on the vein. Uh, got to be able to stack that up. Can't really do anything with black shield to defend against that. So. You know what? I like it. We'll, we'll have to see how NIU executes on it, but uh, definitely an interesting draft so far as the Varus and the Jacks taken off the board by the side of NIU. Twisted Fate by, by Toledo. Sorry, go ahead. You 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And are you going to be banned away here? So double mid lane uh, bans here by Toledo. They definitely don't want uh, be chilling to be chilling. Uh, they they want him to have to, you know, play something a little different. And is that the Corky? It is the Corky. I love Mr. Corky. Uh, that is such a fun champion to play. Uh, definitely not something you see a whole lot of, but uh, definitely one of my personal favorites. So we'll have to see where that one goes. I've seen it. You know, I used to used to play the off meta uh, Corky top lane, but you have to imagine it's probably going to go mid um, with that package drop it down and you know keep a zone of control Velkaz so we're getting some old school matchups man we got the Velkaz the Morgana the Misfortune this is like looking like a season 7 draft at this point I love it honestly that came to me in the moment not gonna lie but uh, Mordecai's are gonna be picked up here by Tempered Fate and uh, we'll change the subject real quick on that one. But uh, now looking at it, Olaf going to be picked up once again by the side of NIU. Uh, we've seen Gotcha Sucker play at one time so far. They're going to go back to that one. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a spicy draft. And I say that every week. But this one, this one, you know what? It's not really spicy. I'll correct myself. This one, like I said about, you know, 30 seconds ago. This would be spicy if they drafted it in season seven. So this is like six years ago, League of Legends. We're going back to back to basics, old school, man. I'm I'm so excited. So, how I would imagine, I would imagine that the idea here is that Olaf is, uh, since his rework, he's more early game focused. And so, I have to imagine that they're going to try to gank towards this Olaf and get uh, get Gotcha Sucker 34 ahead. Now, the rest of the map, frankly, to my, maybe it's my, you know, low elo brain talking here, but... To, the to me, the rest of the map just says, you know what, I'm going to check my watch, set a timer for 25 minutes, I'll farm up some minions in that 25 minutes, and oh, look at that, what what time is it? It's level 13 o'clock, and that's when they're just going to go, okay, team fight time, and that's that's the end of the game. I mean, you against a Corky and a Vayne, you, you don't really do a whole lot in the early game as those two champs, but once they have their items, they are just monumental you know uh carries on for this team so you have to imagine that's kind of how niu wants to play it they want to wait it out and then just kind of uh play for late but you know i don't really see an early game here for the side of uh of toledo either so i don't think they can really punish the fact that niu just wants to play towards late game although you know i could be completely wrong and what could happen is that um, both of these teams decide they want to just get to early game in five minutes, or sorry, get to late game in like five to ten minutes instead, and so it's a bloodbath at the beginning, and then whoever comes out on top gets late game early. I don't really know. It's going to be a crazy game. I, I expect there to be... Uh, I expect this to either be like 50 kills at ten minutes, or to be like zero kills at ten minutes. I mean, it's going to be one or the other. I don't see any in between, to be honest, but
Yeah, I absolutely agree. No, I, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, we'll have to see. I, I Once Vane, I, I really thought you were going to go for it, but uh, I'll say it since you didn't. But once Vane gets to that level 13 and just has that, um, has Dragon Slayer can do the three-shot passive and everything, Amumu won't be crying for lore reasons. It'll, it'll be... It'll be just because it'll be because Vayne is just it's not fun to play a tank into Vayne when she's that, that far ahead. I mean, it's it's not. So once we get to that, we'll have to see where they want to go. Uh, we do see some interesting summoner spells finally. So this time it's not going to be mirror matchups on the summoner spells. We do see teleport on the Mordkaiser. Olaf going to be taking the ghost, but not ghost and uh, ghost and teleport like he did last time. It is going to be just ghost and flash. Um, looking at that, now that is going to be something that's very important to, uh, to keep our eyes on uh, because it does give Olaf a little uh, extra escapability. Looking at it as well, uh, it's going to be the barrier for the Velkaz. Pretty standard for him, but a teleport for the Corky. Again, standard with that um, with the package uh, for the Corky here. Welcome now, we do see Ring. heal on the side of the Misfortune. It's going to be the cleanse for the Vein. And NIU wants to sit in this bush. They think that there might be an invade and they want to you know, counteract Ring. this. Doesn't look like there's going to be one. Uh, Toledo goes for the five points, so pretty standard there. Exhaust on both of these supports. Uh, looking at the runes, uh, ones of note are that we do see the um, the stopwatch here for the Velkaz in the in the runes. Um, we do see that, or the perfect timing I should say would be the rune for that. Conquer for the uh, for the Mordkaiser. Then we see Minions Aftershock for the Amumu. We'll see the that's a lot of arcane comments as we see it on Velkaz, Misfortune, and on Morgana. On the side of NIU, uh, first strike for, or sorry, let's go with from top to bottom. Let me not get ahead of myself. Uh, lethal Tempo for the Olaf, that's pretty standard. Uh, phase Rush for Maokai, once again, very standard. First strike for Corky, so he definitely wants to be doing a little bit of poke damage, get some extra gold, and then back away from this. Uh, lethal Tempo for the Vayne, and then the Summon Airy for Buff Pillsbury Boy on this Nami. Yeah, I think uh, that was interesting because I'm not sure that I know you had the condemn ready, and I think that play goes really well if you have condemn for your uh, for your vein. But when you don't necessarily have that, there's not a whole, as much that uh, I know you can do in that one. So uh, we we do see that it's just a little bit of poke from both sides. Crucially, though, for the side of Toledo, you got both of the health potions off of the Nami here. She had to use uh, chug both of them to get back into this one, and uh, so. If you're NIU, though, you do see that Amumu has now used his health po uh, potion, as well as in the top lane, uh, you see that nice gold lead start to form with that 11 to 4 in CS. Uh, Biscuits also on, as you see there, three of the members of this game. Uh, you see it on the Olaf, the uh, Corky, and then uh, as well on the Misfortune. So, Misfortune and Olaf both taking. The, uh, the inspiration tree second, whereas you see uh, Corky taking the inspiration tree first. get to bot lane slightly earlier does have the um, did have the ability to uh, to know that they were going to be there this is going to be a fight over the rift rift scuttler although flash comes through from Zanakin they want this first and that's going to be a lot of damage at first blood going over towards the vein really nicely done able to follow up and uh, that's the beauty of having that deep ward placed NIU now has a lot of vision in the bot lane and will have that early lead and uh you know, we talked about NIU needing that the game to go kind of later game. Well, the early, the more kills they get, the earlier that it goes for them. So, 
you know, the better that they feel about all this. Yeah, he, you know, uh, Mumu was sitting right on some vision, so Olaf wasn't, uh, and Gotcha Sucker wasn't really scared of, uh, of that one. Now, it does look like the potential for an invade comes through here. The blue has already been taken, so that's not really going to be a big uh, part of this, but that's going to be a lot of slow on towards Gambit here, and now the damage does come through, as that is going to be Gambit falling once again. Gotcha Sucker could be taken very low, but now it's going to flash away. It is going to be the flash coming back out, although this is going to be the kill traded back by base police as uh, Olaf did kind of just jump back in towards the fight there. Uh, I don't think he was going to get out, so he decided he was just going to put in a little more damage, but the second kill of that engage does go over towards B. Chillin, and once again, you now see the Corky start to get ahead. Already has his Caulfield's Warhammer, as well as uh, you look at the, uh, the Vayne up a kill and up quite a bit of CS. So the two major carries for NIU already in very nice spots with, uh, with decent gold leads if you take a look at it. Uh, 1600 gold in Vayne's pocket definitely can go back and get a BF sword as well as, uh, you know, the component there. And it uh, looks like she'll be setting up to do just that here at the end of this wave. And then the Corky also sitting uh, now on 300 gold, she did just back, but uh, has just about a 500 gold lead already in this one. So, nicely played by NIU uh, between all of these lanes so far. You know, I think that's actually a really fair point to make. Um, so we'll have to see how they, you know, if this continues to be how they want to do that. Uh, sorry, I noticed we didn't have the objective timer up. But um, we do see now that this is the ocean break. going to be the first one here as this is the engage coming through from the uh, from Olaf. Just does a nice little bit of poke, backs away, and that's going to be the reset of the fight once again. And are you going to set up for this Drake, though? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, it would have to be, yeah, not not really anything that he can do now with the Amumu kind of just going for the Briscoe, uh, but it does mean that he will now, actually, Amumu may not even get this, the smite does mean that it does go over towards the Amumu, but now it will be the Ragnarok having to be used by Olaf here, so, and I, you can grab that dragon, but this could be Gotcha Sucker in a bad position, he is going to get uh, land chain here, the bandage toss does land on towards him now, he's going to be knocked up here, and Femboy Thighs is going to be able to grab that one with the uh, with nice damage, so if you're the side of Toledo, you do have your main carry, at least, uh, or one of the two main carries, at least is on the board now, uh, as you know, you needs to kind of be a little more careful about some things, but uh, I think overall, cross map, they do get something for it, so it was a nice play. Yeah, and I mean, 
the other thing too with it is uh, to even tie into that, Vayne's range is the lowest of any AD carry, um, or one of the lowest of any AD carry, I should say, uh, which means that it's going to be pretty. Uh, it's going to be even more important positioning here for X Reloaded throughout this game. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, obviously some technical issues here. Uh, so, obviously, Tim's microphone did not come through throughout that entire game and the half that you've watched so far. And obviously, there's going to be a little bit of a cut here. Um, so, the game quit recording. So, we're going to go ahead and just post the rest of the replay file for you guys so that you can at least see the game. There won't be any casting or anything but it will give you guys the opportunity to at least see the rest of them. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with uh, another matchup with NIU versus Central Michigan. That's going to be at uh, 7 o'clock in Central time. So looking forward to seeing you then. And then uh, Tim mentioned, you know, he's uh, very excited to have you guys actually hear his beautiful voice at that point. Uh, but until then, enjoy the rest of the games, and uh, we will uh, be back on Monday. Thank you.
A joke? I've got a friend for that.
destroyed. Rampage. Destroy. <laughs> 